far out in the ocean where the water is as blue as the prettiest corn flower and as clear as crystal, it is very, very deep. So deep indeed that no cable could sound it, and many church steeples of piled one upon another would not reach from the ground beneath to the surface of the water above. There dwell the sea king and his subjects. We must not imagine that there is nothing at the bottom of the sea but bare yellow sand. No, indeed, for, for on this sand grow the strangest flowers and plants, the leaves and stems of which are so pliant that the slightest agitation of the water causes them to stir as if they had life. Fishes, both large and small, guide between the branches as birds fly among the trees here upon the land. In the deepest spot of all sands, the castle of the Sea King. Its walls are built of coral, and the long Gothic windows are of the clearest amber, and the roof is formed of shells that open and close as the water flows over them. Their appearance is very beautiful, for in each lies a glittering pearl which would be fit for the diadem of a queen. The sea king had been a widower for many years, and his aged mother kept house for him. She was a very sensible woman, but exceedingly proud of her high birth, and on that account wore twelve oysters on her tail, while others of high rank were only allowed to wear six. She was, however, deserving of very great praise, especially for her care of the little sea princesses, her six granddaughters. They were beautiful children, but the youngest was the prettiest of them all. Her skin was a clear and delicate as a rose leaf, and her eyes as blue as the deepest sea. But like all the others, she had no feet, and her body ended in a fish's tail. All day long they played in the great halls of the castle, or among the living flowers that grew out of the walls. The large amber windows were open, and the swim swam in, just as the swallows fly into our house when we open the windows. Only the vicious swam up to the princesses, ate out of their hands, and allowed themselves to be stroked. Outside the castle there was a beautiful garden in which grew bright red and dark blue flowers and blossoms like flames of fire. The fruit glittered like gold and the leaves and stems waved to and fro continually. The earth itself was the finest sand, but the blue as the bla flame of a burning sulfur. Over everything lay a peculiar blue radiance, as if the blue sky were everywhere above and below, instead of the dark depths of the sea. In calm weather, the sun could be seen, looking like a reddish-purple flower, with light streaming from the calyx. Each of the young princesses had a little plot of ground in the garden, for she might dig and plant as she pleased. One arranged her flower beds in the form of a whale, another preferred to make hers like the figure of a little mermaid, while the youngest child made hers round like the sun, and in it grew flowers as red as his rays at sunset. She was a strange child, quiet and thoughtful, while her sisters moved, showed delight at the wonderful things which they obtained from the wrecks of the vessels. She cared only for her pretty flowers, red like the sun, and a beautiful marble statue. It was the representation of a handsome boy carved out of pure white stone, which had fallen to the bottom of the sea from a wreck.